This is Frank Goss with SGTV. I was 19 in the summer of 1967. Vietnam was underway, Scott McKenzie was on the radio, and I met Anya Fisher for the first time. It was the year she painted this portrait. A sculptor friend of mine, Larry Shoemaker, took me to a party at Anya's house in the foothills of Altadena, California. I had never met anyone like Anya before, nor been in a house quite like hers. The house was divided neatly into living quarters for she and her husband, Eddie, and a large studio. Larry had told me that she was born of Russian aristocracy, had fled Russia one step ahead of the communist revolution, and that she was a bohemian. But everyone was a bohemian of some sort in 1969. At the party I met novelists, poets, musicians, and artists of all types. Everyone at the party was socially unconventional. Long hair, crafted clothes, handmade jewelry. Everyone made an effort to stand out from the crowd, except Anya. She did not care about being unconventional. She was unconventional. In her dining room was a west-facing window. On the shelves in front of the window, she had arranged all kinds of cut glass, faces, bowls, and cups. When daylight came through the window, each facet of the glassware caught light and created dozens of prismatic rainbows around the room. Her living room was carpeted in Persian rugs. Indian pillows were everywhere. Exotic tapestries were on the wall. Everywhere. Color. There was always a kaleidoscope present. Every room, every nook, every vantage point had been thought out carefully and was arranged to draw the eye. But the most fascinating room was her studio. There was always a fresh canvas on the easel, and the room smelled perpetually of terps and thinners. She was 62 when I walked into that party, but she might have been the youngest person there. She was perpetually excited about people, ideas, literature, science, and art. In a conversation, her eyes burned bright with interest, and she was a spectacular conversationalist, forever taking a point of view no one had considered. She really only painted two subjects, still lifes and the female form. But even with what might have been a dearth of subject matter, she never repeated herself. Each canvas was like her first. My wife opened our gallery in 1984 with an exhibition of Anya's work. Nearly 30 years later, we still show her work and represent her niece. At the end of the party, 45 years ago, I remember her walking me out to my car, a 1953 MGTD held together with hanger wire. She took one look at it and in her deep smoker's voice said, without an ounce of caution, when do we go on a trip? Come and see Anya's kaleidoscope on view through May.